Dear Heartland Research Group friends. I am writing this message to provide details about what recently happened in terms of strong evidence supporting the location of the Zarahemla Temple location. Some very compelling evidence has developed in support of the site location. Some of you know that yesterday, Thursday, July 9th, I was emailed three aerial color infrared photographs over the Zarahemla Temple site for 2002, 2010 and 2019. These were sent to me from Calvin Hamilton asking me whether I could see the temple site in the photographs. In their unenhanced form, no I could not see the temple site in the photographs, but as some of you know, I taught remote sensing for 30 years at three universities and I taught courses at the graduate level and served as the graduate thesis and dissertation advisor to 80 plus PhD and MS slash MA graduate students who were specializing in remote sensing. If I cannot squeeze hidden patterns out of an image, especially a color infrared, CIR, image, then we are all in trouble in terms of what I can bring to this effort. Surfilm was developed during World War II by Kodak to help detect enemy camouflage being used to hide things on the ground. If a feature on the ground is a real plant then they will appear red in a color infrared photograph, but if camouflage is covering something like a tank, the camouflage material will appear purple in the color infrared photograph. The first attached image is a panel in which I have placed the original 2010 sur image from Calvin, left side, the middle images are one I enhanced using a non-linear contrast stretch, and finally, the far right image I created using a specialized index to extract subtle plant information about vegetation out of an image, what we in science call the biophysical and biochemical properties such as plant biomass, cover, leaf area index, LAI, leaf canopy arrangements or orientation in 3D space, health, nutrient conditions etc. The index is called the normalized difference vegetation index or NDVI. After computing the NDVI using the red and near infrared wavelengths of light, I immediately saw what I thought might be the rectangular area of the temple site and sent it to Wayne May for confirmation. The temple site is the redder rectangular area on the right side of the third image which Wayne May confirmed as the precise location for the ancient temple of Zarahemla. Wayne also indicated that there were other structures that were obviously impacting the patterns in the image along the eastern edge of the field. He also observed patterns in other areas of the field that he now wished to investigate. Wayne then keyed off from observable features in the field and surrounding areas of the field to superimpose white line boxes onto the NDVI image to see how well his identified site matched the NDVI pattern in the imagery. Wayne was using a manual method called aerial correspondence analysis which is a way of determining how well patterns on two maps match each other spatially. For example, is there an 80% overlap between the two maps? The more overlap, the higher the aerial correspondence between two mapped features. Based on the analysis results, it appears to me that there is close to 100% aerial correspondence between Wayne's map and the NDVI map. Further analysis of the enhanced 2010 color infrared image shows some linear patterns in the field west, left on the image, of the temple site field. I have marked the linear features using white arrows. The vegetation was much heavier in 2010, so I did not see these features in that image. These features are likely modern in origin, but I do not know, so I think we might want to look more carefully at these patterns too. Wouldn't it be amazing if they turned out to be streets of the city of Zarahemla as similar patterns did in the color infrared imagery over an approximately 2,000-year-old ancient Roman city in Europe that was recently discovered in a farm field. They, however, could be a result of soil compaction caused by tractors driving over the same area for many years, but until we investigate, we do not know. I decided to compute some basic summary statistics from samples of the spectral values inside the temple plot versus outside the temple plot. What I found was that the red normalized difference vegetation index, NDVI, values were highly statistically different on the inside versus the outside of the temple plot, by 11.9 NDVI values, which is a lot since the standard deviation values for the samples were less than 3 for both samples. This is important to know because we could be asked if the NDVI values within the temple plot are statistically different than the NDVI values outside the temple plot. This would be a fair question since if the differences were small, one might question whether the differences were statistically different than a random chance event. With these statistics we could explain, the NDVI values were 11.9 values different within and outside the temple plot. The very low standard deviation values tell us that the samples were very similar in reflectance for samples taken within the temple plot and the samples outside the temple plot were also very similar, but the differences within and outside the temple plot were statistically different. While looking at the graph we could say, notice that within the temple plot, the average NDVI value is 154.4 out of a possible minimum slash maximum value range of 0 to 255, 
with a standard deviation of 2.3 and the average NDVI values outside the temple plot was 166.3 with a standard deviation of 2.9. These very low standard deviation values relative to their mean tell us that vegetation within and outside the temple plot was homogeneous with respect to their reflectance and therefore, the chances of getting these differences in reflectance by random chance are less than 5 times out of 100 and therefore the probability of being wrong in saying the temple plot NDVI values are different than the values outside the temple plot is very low. The temple plot is reflecting light in the red and near infrared wavelengths differently than the areas outside the temple and the rectangular shape of the plot tells us that it was caused by humans. The lower NDVI values within the temple plot tell us there is less green vegetation in the temple plot than outside the temple plot which would be expected with the sandy texture of the temple plot soils. I believe that the differences are not because of the differences in soil colors as much as it is because of the difference in plant types and the amount of green plant material. There is less green plant material within the temple plot. Some of you know how this Zarahemla site was originally located. If you do know, you have witnessed the Lord proving it was found by revelation. To put the odds into perspective the area between Montrose and Fort Madison is about 16,000 acres. The temple site is about 0.20 acres in the area. This spot was correctly identified to the foot within a 16,000 acre area. Some might call it luck, I do not have enough faith to call it luck. Best wishes. Dr. Kevin Price